All right, everybody, this is exciting. Christian, uh, we, our guest is finally here. Uh, brought that back. Yes, feels I, good to say that again. I, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm thrilled. We don't we don't do uh, we're you know we've been doing more interviews in person. We tried we tried to do this in in person, but this guest only flies private. She told us, so it just made it too expensive <laughs> uh, for us to, <laughs> to do that. But she's absolutely incredible. Let's see the first signing for the USLW team, Minnesota Aurora FC. Also, at one point was a place kicker for yeah. Vanderbilt University. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible, <laughs> and I'm intimidated, Sarah Fuller, everybody. Hey, Sarah, guys. what's up? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh. This is, uh, we're absolutely stoked. I mean, there's obviously a, a lot uh, uh, to discuss the, uh, you know, because Minnesota Aurora, who, uh, it, it's it's wild. You know, we've been in, involved in, in soccer. We started this show in 2015. And the the you know you know people say it's not it's not about just doing a, a great show it's about the the friends you've made along the way. Yeah. Who says you've that? Heard, you've heard that before? <laughs> Who yeah. says that? What Hallmark <laughs> card are you reading? <laughs> but we we've met so many people in Minnesota going to like either Minnesota United games just a, a lot of friends and now uh, the the people that we know the the the, the fans uh, of of Minnesota soccer are now involved in the ownership group of Minnesota. Aurora and this, uh, so this is clearly an exciting time for soccer in Minnesota. But the yeah. fact that let, let, we have to start with the fact that you are the first signing, you, you are the face of the franchise. No uh, pressure. <laughs> what? No <laughs> pressure. <laughs> what does it feel to have that honor? I mean, that was really cool. Uh, and obviously, I, when I learned about the team and um, the community ownership, in fact, I think there's like 48 out of the 50 states, like somebody owns part of the team. And I just think that's was so cool and uh there's the fact that they reached out to me and wanted me to be one of their goalkeepers i was like yeah i'll do that let's go let's move up to minnesota as long as it's not cold we're we're good so <laughs> well i hate to okay. tell you this Sarah. <laughs> i don't know what the, i don't know how they pitched it to what you part but of minnesota wow. are you in fam <laughs> Because I feel like cold comes with the territory. <laughs> but I'm only here during the summer, so it's Smart, okay. Right. It's Smart. <laughs> See, this is what I talked about. Flying private only wants to be in Minnesota during the summer. Oh my god, she's a very, know. she's a very tough negotiator. Uh, this Sarah Fuller. I mean, look, we have to ask. Obviously, your 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 CV uh, has has a few lefts and rights that are typically not expected of a women's soccer player. You got the opportunity. You were the first. Um, you were the first female place kicker and the first female place kicker to, to or the first female points uh, scorer for what is it a, a big five? What's the what's the conference? Uh, power, power, power five, five. Power, so, conference, right? Yeah. And also, yeah, we're from New York. College football I know nothing is, about college sports. Me, is oh not God. our thing. We do not mean to offend anybody. I do. Uh, I roll honestly, tide is yeah. that a thing? I, I honestly know. thought <laughs> the, uh, a college football team was picked by flipping a coin. I didn't know. <laughs> People try it out for it. People get very upset with me. I have no idea. No, but honestly, Vanderbilt, a very big school. In fact, we're friends with a comedian named uh, Nate Bargatze. I don't know if you know who oh that is. Oh, my God. I love him. Yes. Yeah, he is Mr. Him. Vanderbilt. Okay? I yes. thought it was yeah. his yeah. brand. I thought that was his last name until I actually <laughs> met him. I thought I was like, wait, you ain't Nate Vanderbilt? Why are you? Why are you so big a very wealthy school? family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he loves the school. And obviously, it's a huge yeah. deal for you to get a chance to, uh, to play for the team. Um, why don't you take us through that moment? Is it something you you asked for? Is it something they asked you? How did this come about? Yeah, so I, I'm on the soccer team, obviously at Vanderbilt. Uh, I was uh, we were going through COVID and everything, and we ended up playing our SEC tournament, um, and we we won all our games, and we won the SEC tournament, <laughs> which <laughs> I'm really really proud of. Um, but during the tournament, I actually had an assist from about midfield. Um, I I kicked the you know kicked the ball, and my friend, my teammate, volleyed it in, and um, and so I guess they were kind of like, well, she can kick, and uh, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, COVID kind of messed up the the football team. It uh, took out the entire kicking team essentially, and so all we had was a placeholder and um, a long snapper. And so they went to the soccer team. Well, first they asked the football team and everybody's like, well, we can't kick. <laughs> and then, they, and then they asked the soccer team and they were like, it's up to the coaches. Like, who do you think would be good for this? And uh, they asked me if I'd be willing to try out literally had just gotten back from Alabama from the tournament. And they're like, can you go get your cleats and, and try out real quick? And I was like, okay, sure. And, 
Um, so yeah, I went out there. I made, I think it was 12 out of 15 field goals and they were like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll take you. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> that's a pretty good, yeah. <laughs> good percentage. I don't know. I don't know a lot about, uh, being a place kicker, but that sounds good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, especially like for what they kept me for the next game. And I was like, I don't want you guys to keep me just because like I'm a girl and because of all the stuff that's happening, I want you to keep me because I'm useful. And they're like, no, we're actually going to keep you for PATs because, you have a better percentage than any of the kickers. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, hey, uh, <laughs> when you join, when you join the men's football team, do you have to, is it like going to jail? Like you knock out the biggest dude first. Is it like that? <laughs> like, how do you, how do you, how do you assimilate yourself and be like, I'm not here to be played with. <laughs> no, no, they weren't, uh, they weren't bad at all. They were fantastic. Um, we, we were making jokes. Like I made jokes to the head football coach. I was like, wow, my, my boyfriend, he's dating a football player now. <laughs> like how, like how crazy, like we never thought that that would be <laughs> the thing, but, um, yeah, I would have no, done, if I would have hit, like, as soon as practice was over, I would have yelled like, Showers, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, kidding. I want to see. I want to see Sarah in like a a uh, you know get, buying her NFL draft suit. You know, just oh a big gosh. purple gaudy. Seventeen oh, buttons. I would wear the heck out of a power suit. I'd be like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Like, where am I going to? <laughs> Gary Jones, I see you. Let's do this thing. Like, but I mean, we let, let we you know we can't be uh um you know minimize the the. the the impact of you uh, uh, playing in these games and, and and kicking for the team because I I, I would I would say your life ha has probably definitely changed pretty dramatic yeah. uh, dramatically. <laughs> you have been in obviously uh, uh, I mean, different magazines. Uh, just uh, profiled. You were at the inauguration. Uh, I, yeah, uh, I was as involved well? in it. Yeah, involved um, in it because of COVID, I wasn't allowed to um, uh, attend per se, but mm -hmm. I. Uh, they asked me if I would uh, announce that Kama would be the first woman vice president. And right. so, yeah, a few, like a few weeks before it, I went out and filmed it. Um, and it was funny because I was watching it on TV and everyone's like, how's DC? And I was like, I don't know. I'm in Nashville. I'm just watching it like you are. But... <laughs> no, but it was, uh, it was an incredible experience. So That's, yeah, a, but to, that's to amazing. To, yeah, to get to do something like that. But the, the um, you know, for... Uh, it's been a, a interesting the the level of interest and and just uh, just attention that your life uh gets it's almost essentially over the span of just a, a few weeks. How how did that feel uh for you at the moment? Because it it can be challenging to a lot of people. You know, you got a video that goes like let's say viral on TikTok and the comments are all wild. So I can <laughs> imagine something like this uh, uh, at this degree must have been uh, uh, pretty exciting and challenging. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, well, a lot of it when it's happening, I'm still going through finals. Uh, so I just so like I have to, you know, write my essays. And <laughs> Sarah, you're a football stuff. player now. Someone does the studying for you. <laughs> Don't we know how this works, dude? Sarah. Oh, my God. No, the school you graduated. Is <laughs> so it's all good. Do you yeah. say this things now? It's yeah. all good. Oh you ain't in the school yeah. no more. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, the school's actually really great in like making sure, like, hey, you good? Like, let's let's just like plan everything out that you have yeah. and make sure we're tackling it one thing at a time. And then, yeah, I mean, I would take. I think it was like twice a week. I would go in and sit down for like maybe an hour or two hours and have different interviews. Um, so I was just constantly doing those things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was crazy. Like life changed overnight. Um, it was, it was a little weird too. Cause people were like finding my parents' phone numbers, like Fox news or ABC or whatever. And I, they were trying to call them about stuff. And we were like, what is going on? <laughs> this so, crazy. Yeah, I, if I ever did I anything where they would have to find my mom's phone number, she would pick up. And the first thing she'd say is he didn't do it. Like she knows. <laughs> Get it out. Get it out right now. <laughs> deny, deny, yeah. deny. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. What was the um, most, maybe most ridiculous uh, either article or thing? Because this is, you, you know, you are a, a young woman. And then to, you know, obviously there was a lot of like 
stupidity and people yeah. with a terrible uh, comments, but there was so many positive and uplifting things. But is there anything that stood out to you as like uh, that kind of either absurd? I didn't think my life would get to this point or, or that somebody would be saying uh, this about me that isn't necessarily gross or hideous. Yeah, someone called me a fridge one time. They're like, you look like a fridge. <laughs> and I was like, that's always what? stuck with me. I was like, I just, do I look like a that's fridge? A, like, <laughs> see, there is a there's a sort of uh, um, looseness or, or crassness that the internet uh, will bring that you yeah. don't know exactly how it's gonna make uh, people feel because if you are if you are a, a uh, an offensive lineman and somebody calls you a fridge the context you might be like okay I think this person thinks I could do my job right well. yeah you know I mean? right I've prepared my body for this people. role <laughs> <laughs> you know if someone called me a fridge I'd be like I'm just up here trying to tell jokes fam yeah. <laughs> Like, Why we gotta what? get personal? You know, I know what that means. Like, yeah. I mean, I try to take it. Po I'm like, I'm six one. I'm two hundred twenty pounds. Like, I could, I could take someone out if I needed to. But like, a fridge? Just, am I boxy? Like, I don't. You yeah. Know. <laughs> well, what, what, I, I imagine at the very least, being, uh, you know, having a, a six foot one uh, frame, being a goalkeeper, uh, it, it, playing playing in USL, and, and like, who knows if in a couple years you're in NWSL. That, that's an intimidating goalkeeper. There aren't yeah. many goalkeepers uh, that can, uh, you know, uh, that with, with that wingspan, that height uh, in NWSL and in and, and, and a lot of women's leagues. But how, how does that play an advantage into uh, putting, you know, striking a little bit of fear uh, in some of these forwards? Yeah, I mean, I just own it. I think my entire life people are like, wow, like, I wish I was tall. And I was like, yeah, like, I'm tall. <laughs> and <laughs> so I've always loved it. And, you know, I have a... a I, I saw a post the other day. It was like when I'm just talking to people, like this is my personality. And then like, I'm like a T-Rex out on the field, just screaming yeah. all the time. And like, <laughs> that's definitely how I feel. Like I, I get my like deep voice going on. So, oh, I take that 100% to my advantage. Um, yeah, I'm out there to win and you are not going to win a tackle or uh, <laughs> a cross or anything like that. One of the, <laughs> one of the things that I absolutely love about uh, the interview you did with Sports Illustrated was a quote. And this is about you playing soccer as a child, not about your time in uh, American football. This is a quote from you. You said, while laughing, by the way, I think it fits my I think the position of goalkeeper fits my personality. I can be loud and run into people. It's perfect. That sounds like you're talking about American football. <laughs> that's, I think what, you're playing you playing rugby? That's you as a goalkeeper. Uh, I, I would assume being a goalkeeper is a bit isolating because you're not out there. But you've just said the opposite. One, you're loud. So I guess you're telling your, your you know, those goalkeepers that when a goal goes in, you immediately yell at your back line. I love that. And two, you run into people. Who are you running into? <laughs> Well, they're in my way. They gotta get out of the way, kind of thing, you know? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the we you know we've so we've spoken to um, probably uh, on our show we've spoken to probably goalkeepers the most. Uh, yeah. Oh really? Uh, for, for whatever reason, we're, it feels we're the like, best. Honestly, we're you know we're funny and <laughs> Go you're also the craziest. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect for a yeah. Comedy that's show. a goalkeepers. <laughs> yes. It's a different breed of of human being. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's some, or maybe it's it's you know uh, maybe they feel underrepresented. And when when the media team asks who wants to do interviews, the goalkeepers are like, okay, we need. To, the goalkeepers union they raise their glove or, <laughs> yes. or whatever uh, but the uh, uh that that like stereotype of goalkeepers uh you know we've we've spoken to plenty and yes there is a you know this is the job interview sarah fuller that we're talking to right now but when <laughs> when the, when the, when they punch in uh, there's a, a there's a sort of a different personality. I know that you uh, grew up playing in uh, in the midfield, I believe. No, or or, or or more up front. Yeah, when I was uh, when I was younger, like you know, like little kids, like uh, it seemed like a big field to run on at the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I was midfield, and then they started putting me in goal, and I was offended. I was like, do you guys not think I'm a good enough like midfield? And they're like, no, we just think you're a good goalkeeper. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and um, and no, and because of that, because they kept putting me in goal, I was like, I'm gonna take, I like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I took a break, and then uh, about a year later, my sister started playing soccer, and I was like, ooh, I'm jealous of that. So I started playing again, <laughs> and uh, 
found a team and they're like, we need a goalkeeper for an indoor league. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And, um, I, we ended up winning the championship there, uh, out of, from PKs. So I, I won, technically won the championship and they were like, nice. uh, will you come play like our real league with us and <laughs> we'll get you a goalkeeper coach. And that's when I started to actually like learn how to be a goalkeeper and, and what it meant. And, no, it's a very interesting position because we joke about it all the time. We were doing 1v1s yesterday, and the fact that you have to, like, shut your brain off from doing what it's, it wants to do, like, it wants to stop, and it's like, why are you putting yourself in a danger? And you have to, like, physically be like, no, we're going to fight through this instead of, you know, flight. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very interesting concept to kind of, like, tweak your brain really and be is. like, we're going after everything. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's something I envy. I, I play, uh, you know, Sunday League, and we have a goalkeeper. We uh, we have a, a – uh, our team is all comedians, and we and our, we, one of the comedians is a <laughs> very good they're goalkeeper. They're terrible, by the way, uh, just <laughs> as you expected. <laughs> How do you get anything <laughs> done? I would just be laughing the whole time. Yeah, yeah they try to roast the other team to win. <laughs> but we had it. So he got hurt. He got hurt, and I had to. I had to step in goal. Oh no! And I mean, it couldn't be a, any worse. I just the the, the the psychology one, right? Obviously, when somebody's coming after you, I I want to run away. But I I got humiliated because uh, the the player with the ball. Uh, goes to he's coming like uh, he has a defender on him but he's coming mm -hmm. towards goal he's like in, in like kind of my near post and then he cross then he I, I'm like oh he's about to cross it he's looking at he's looking at the person he's gonna pass it to yeah so I I'm I'm like you know what let me get ahead of this mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the far post because I know he's gonna cross it and he did not cross it he just shot mm -hmm. it into an empty net <laughs> <laughs> so not for me so I will all due respect. Uh, it's a, it's a very difficult job with uh, with you know saying the least. Speaking yeah. of uh, the type People of job it is, now. like I was talking to a, a pilot once, and he said that it's like like loud like long moments of of boredom sandwiched between two like sheer terror moments, right? The takeoff and the <laughs> landing. It's like it's like there's nothing happening, then all of a sudden everything is happening. Yeah, it seems to me like that's probably the closest description for a goalkeeper. If you add running into people uh, for you, yeah. Um, but what 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 happens? Yeah, we in hope those an moments? airplane's not running into people. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. By the way, terrible pilot. Uh, <laughs> what do you? How do you deal with those moments of like that lull that comes, and then having to sort of pick everything back up and get all your senses back up for? you know, three or four people running at you with a ball. Like what happens in that moment? How do you gear yourself up for that? Yeah. Well, you're not just standing there the whole time. You're, you're like, I think of it as like ch playing chess. Um, you're putting your teammates in the right position to where you don't have to actually do any work. Um, <laughs> nice. I <laughs> so like this. The, I, <laughs> Delegate. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the best way to put it, like if I'm not like mentally tired by the end of the game, then I probably did something wrong. I wasn't engaged and focused. And um, I count my really my only breaks are when the ball goes like way out of bounds and I can like reset and think about like, I normally think about like making a sandwich or something. And then I, <laughs> I'm like, oh, the game, game's back on. We keep going. <laughs> so. that, that's a, that's Alexis's strategy yeah. in goal. Uh, <laughs> Just, I'm, it's me in goal going, you know, I don't use arugula enough. Oh no, they're coming. <laughs> 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 um, so, uh, Sarah, I do want to talk about the, the new league. Obviously, uh, the USL uh, W uh, League. It is a the the, the new uh, uh, second division uh, for uh, for uh, for women's soccer in the United States. And uh, just simply just uh, playing in the league and, and getting this opportunity. Uh, what, what is it? What does it mean to you? What are you? Uh, you know, what are some of the goals as far as uh, looking to uh, you know as far as the, the success of the team and, and and personally for your own career. Yeah, I mean, I think it. I'm so glad they brought this back and like the the way it's set up because it's pre pro. So it's it's the way I've been explaining it to other people is like the minor leagues for baseball and kind of gives you, um, you know, an experience and like in a professional environment. And um, I like speaking for Aurora. I it's just been absolutely incredible the professionalism and um just the way like the stadium we're at and how everybody's working and um just the kind of people we have on our team it, it's been I don't know like 10 days of training now and I I've loved every second of it I've learned a lot and I definitely think um 
yeah, this, this league gives you an opportunity to prepare for the next level and, you know, go to the pros and WSL overseas, whatever you want to do. Um, and then we have like a lot of young girls on our team who just want uh, to, to challenge themselves over the summer and, uh, you know, they're getting ready to go to college or they're, you're in, they're an undergrad in college, you know, underclassmen and um, they're trying to gain that experience. And uh, I just think it's a fantastic opportunity for all of us uh, for sure. So I, I think it's really cool all the stuff that Aurora has because I, I've talked to people who play in the NWSL and I was like, I think we have nicer stuff than <laughs> <laughs> like we've got it set up a little better. So <laughs> it's been kind of cool. It's cool to see. I mean, we talked a little bit about having, you know, fans from all over the country own a part of the team. And you mentioned 48 yeah. States with owners, but it's also cool to see that the team is built player first. And that's something mm-hmm. that we've spoken to a lot of the people we've spoken to uh, Minnesota Roar about. It seems like the player is the focus. And in fact, you've probably noticed over the last few years, the idea of women's soccer, whether it's here, but almost specifically here, but like even in Europe, it's kind of taken now a bit more of a front seat and it's a bit more, it's getting a lot more respect and a lot more attention. What are your thoughts on that? Just watching what's happening, seeing how Minnesota Aurora FC has been set up specifically for you folks. And then also the fact that the the league and the sport and, and women's sports across the, the, the across the globe are getting a lot more respect. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that it, we all we needed was more exposure. I mean, if you put it in terms of like how long men's soccer has been around, it's been around a lot longer than like the NWSL or, you know, and I, I think that we're reaching numbers that are equal, if not more than the MLS and some things. And um, I think that speaks volumes. And the fact that our, you know, community let like owned uh, team is, is looking for a sellout on their our first game. I think they were saying about 5,000 people were going to fill that stadium and, it, it's it's insane and I have to like mentally prepare myself like we our coaches talked to us today like hey we're gonna practice with crowd noise on so you guys can get ready for this like that's how big of a deal this is and um I mean we're all wait, just wait, wait, wait. is it like uh the crap like practice with like they're gonna put booze in the in the noise? Yeah. <laughs> what? no it's <laughs> Minnesota it's not. very polite <laughs> It's Minnesota. It's very polite. We are going to be <laughs> so <laughs> tough. <laughs> is it do you, like the crowd noise is at every sort of uh, aspect of the game? Uh, <laughs> boos, cheers, you know, There's bad like a, calls. A DJ hitting a button. <laughs> your, your, your goal kick goes out of bounds. Boo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, be, yeah, I'm not putting you guys in charge of the, the crowd. <laughs> we're, not doing that, so. <laughs> we're trying to build them psychologically, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's the sound of me trying to order a pizza slice they're like this is not going to happen during a game alexis shut it off <laughs> uh, obviously we talked a little bit about women's soccer huge news uh came out uh today that finally uh, u.s soccer has made an equal pay for a uh, world cup bonus and a couple of other uh, things uh why don't you talk about that because that's huge yeah i mean i think that's just common sense <laughs> they play the same game it's the same like I, why not they need to be paid the same and so um I, it's frustrating that it took this long but the fact that we're able to move forward and um with the game of soccer women's soccer growing so much um it's just a really exciting uh step forward and i know all the the women on that team are are very stoked <laughs> to increase their pay um for sure so yeah i mean it's it's huge it's huge for yeah, women just, everywhere the, so the the level of, of, you know, we've had, uh, you know, Megan Rapino, Ali Krieger, Ashton Harris on the show. Uh, uh, I so love many them. People, They're so nice. <laughs> they, so the absolute best. And, and we've spoken to so many people that have, um, you know, I don't know if you, you saw the, the documentary uh, LFG and, and, and just even and even speaking to them about those, the, the work. I mean, it's not it, it is great that we. I have finally like reached this moment, but the amount of time and work that was mm-hmm. put into, uh, you know, reaching this uh, CBA, uh, I, I just I, I say that to say like cause you're you're also doing that work, right? You are playing. Uh, obviously, you, you are now playing in in this league, and and this is really the the beginning of your uh, professional career. Mm-hmm. But the the you know the opportunities and the things that you've have already done, uh, whether with Vanderbilt or just being in all these 
magazines and really just being the, <laughs> the, the face and doing all this work. I mean, it, it, it says a lot because it is part to me, the way I see it, it is part of the bigger picture yeah. of e equality in, in, in sports overall. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, for sure. I think it's that. Well, that's really kind of you to say, like, I'm kind of help uh, moving that forward, because that's all I want to do. I think I was given an opportunity and put in a position where, you know, I have a platform and I don't ever want to, you know, be seen badly in that light. And all I want to do is uh, support women in sports in any way possible. So that was very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> every time, every time you were loud and ran into somebody. You move the needle forward. <laughs> okay. um, all right, Sarah, I want to get to uh, some of our uh, uh, questions from fans. This is a uh, Gully yeah. Squad. This is, uh, uh, this is our supporters group, the Cooligan supporters group. Um, so we have a. Which is a, why a we do the podcast with crowd noise because they will boo at us <laughs> if they don't like it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need to add those. Uh, so uh, this is this is just a, a comment. This is from Jess Howen. Uh, who, she's a, a Colorado Rapids uh, uh, fan, but she said uh, she's such a freaking badass. Referring uh, to you, of course. Thank <laughs> nope. you. No question. It. Just want you to know you're a badass. No question. All right. Uh, just you know, it's not just questions. It's also statements. All right. <laughs> yes. um, this um, question from uh, David Stewart. He asks, uh, "How does uh, how do you view the role of USLW versus NWSL?" Uh, and then uh, there's a couple other questions there about favorite EPL club, and then also pineapple on pizza, yes or no. So you could start. Let's start with the last two. Favorite EPL club, if you have one, and then pineapple on pizza, yes or I no. I want everyone to remember she's oh. from the south before she answers the pineapple question. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so for the um, for the club thing, I I'm really bad about like watching soccer outside of soccer because I'm playing soccer all the time. So I just enjoy all of them. And everybody, every <laughs> time I say like <laughs> every time I say a specific team, they're like wrong, and I'm like. Okay, I don't know. So. You gave you gave the most mom soccer mom answer. I just, I mean, I just hope for a good sporting session. I yeah, know. I mean, I, I love all my game. children me equally. Me you know? Yeah, I know. what's um, my favorite then, team? The one that tries the hardest. Right. <laughs> okay, and then the most serious question of all. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not a pineapple on pizza kind of gal. That's that's just how I am. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. This right. interview can continue. You are well. more than welcome to come to New York whenever you want, Sarah. Uh, 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 the, um, but the David Stewart did also ask, what do you think the role is of USLW versus NW? So would you kind of answer it as it being the minor leagues? But do you think there will be an opportunity for, for some of these players to showcase themselves for these NWSL teams? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think a few of the teams, um, I know Kansas City and I want to say Washington State. I know a few of those teams have uh, USLW teams in and of itself. So, um, uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a fantastic opportunity. Um, you have a lot of NWSL people kind of involved in all this. So it's great exposure. I shoot, if I was an NWSL coach, I'd be looking to the USLW team. I mean, these people have taken their summers and, and put it into soccer and wanting to get better and wanting to get that exposure. So that's a, that's a perfect place to look for sure. Very okay. cool. This, I get, this question, I have a, I have a question for myself. Oh, uh, okay. Just about, just for uh, goalkeepers uh, in general, are there any um, uh, players that you model your game off of, or players you highly respect or big fans of? Uh, just, you know, I just want to get uh, that perspective a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I grew up watching Hope Solo. Um, thankfully, I didn't model myself after, you know, some of her... <laughs> Character traits. Off, um, off the pitch, <laughs> we take we take the best of of, 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 of of other people. We take their wisdom. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then I'd say like I'd been I've been watching Ashton Harris, and I had the honor of meeting her uh, this past December at the NWSL Championship, and she's so nice. And um, her and Allie were just fantastic. So uh, yeah, definitely, I've always been uh, keeping an eye on them and 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 watching her and her game. So. Awesome. By the way, they're, they're homies with us. We absolutely love yeah. Allie and Ashlyn. Um, yeah, when, they're so when we nice. Saw them, when we saw them in Orlando, I saw Ashlyn start running towards me. And I'm like, why is she running towards me? And then <laughs> the, what was on her shirt started to get higher, and I realized she's jumping into my arms. And I am... <laughs> 
I am like, I have to catch Ashlyn Harris and B, I cannot drop Ashlyn Harris. I was so nervous and freaking out. We had like 17 oh my cameras God. and nobody caught this. It freaked me oh out. Oh my gosh. Wait, I got to tell you. Okay, so when I met her, um, I my agent was like, hey, we'll have you come up to the box later and like hang out. And I was so, so anyways, I was just sitting with my boyfriend and we were watching the game. Um, just in the stands, uh, the NWSL championship this past year. And um, I'm sitting there and someone steps on a ketchup packet and gets ketchup all over my new white sweatshirt. And I was like, great. And then I get a text, hey, come up to this, the, our box where I, we want you to meet everybody. And I was like, great, I have ketchup all over me. <laughs> so we go up there and I try to get all the ketchup off. And then they're like, okay, here's all this food, like eat food. And I was like, okay, great. So I got a plate of potatoes. And I was eating the potatoes, and then a piece of potato fell on the ground. I was like, oh, no, and I didn't have a napkin. <laughs> so I just picked it up, and in walks Ashton Harris. And they're like, here, Sarah, here's Ashton Harris. And I have a potato in my hand. And I'm like, I have, uh, literally, this is what I said to her, I have potato in my hand. And then she shook my hand, and <laughs> she's like, that's okay. Nice to meet you. And she, like, takes the potato and, like, <laughs> 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 Adorable. I'm like, how do just- you... <laughs> How do you recover from that? What do you start <laughs> running into people? <laughs> being <laughs> loud? <I don't> There's <laughs> no <laughs> hilarious. Oh I, my god! I don't, I don't normally like now that I've kind of like been around. I, I'm not saying like I've been around a lot of celebrities and everything, but like been around that kind of environment. I don't get nervous, but I was nervous to meet them because like I grew up watching them. Like, how could you not? And um, yeah, of course, I just ruin it with like potato on my hand. And uh, just, but they were so nice, like absolutely the kindest people ever. Uh, they probably, you know, think about the uh, potato yeah. incident on their end. <laughs> Next time we meet them, we're yeah, going to be like, yo, we just had Sarah Fuller on the show. Ashley's going to be like, you mean potato in my hand? Yeah, I remember. Her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> potato in my hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Terrible way to be a goalkeeper, get a potato in your gloves. But hey, she's she's doing her thing, you know? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. No, you mean, it, it, ketchup it, shirt? No, no, no. Potato man. No, it's the same girl. What? I was a really? walking french fry is what I was. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, uh, yeah, when we were, we did an event. We were hosting uh, uh, an event, and, and they, were, they were there as well. And we were, it was Ashlyn and Ali and, and also Samuel Eto. Samuel Eto, the legendary uh, f- footballer for, that played uh, uh, in, in England and, and, yeah. and Spain. He's, uh, <laughs> so, it literally, like I remember you know, growing up playing FIFA with Samuel Eto and stuff like that. And when we were all in the same room together, more nervous around Ali and Ashlyn than Samuel Eto'. Nobody's Eto. talking I mean, to Samuel Eto'. Presence. <laughs> Nobody. We were all talking to Ali and Ashlyn. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Okay. All right. Hold on. I have a question. I have a question from MJ Lee. And by the way, look, you see my face. The way I'm going to ask this question, I'm going to sound like an absolute creep. But I want you to know this is being asked <laughs> by a woman. Okay. Yeah, so a soccer gonna, mom, by the way. A soccer okay. mom. A soccer mom. Okay. So I want you to know, even though I look like I'm ordering a sandwich at a deli at all times, this is not the guy asking the question. This is from a soccer mom. Okay. Okay. How, Sarah Fuller. How much weight can those thighs and glutes press? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now again, I sound like a I sound like a freak. Okay, <laughs> that's a that is a proper soccer mom who's asking that question. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, so I can't do like squats. And, well, I can now. I had like a back problem, um, but I'm more into like deadlifting. I had a post one time. I was think I was deadlifting like two fifty or something. And I posted, I was like, I can lift your mans. Like, I. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like you so much. You know what? <laughs> you, can, you can lift up uh, two men. Yeah, you know, two of them. <laughs> why did, in fact, why didn't you just take your boyfriend's sweatshirt? He ain't going to say no to you, yo. Know? <laughs> she held me up. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> uh, incredible. Uh, MJ, she did ask uh, another question. She said, How much did weight training. Uh, help you develop uh, your kick for either soccer or football? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm primarily soccer, so uh, it, it helps a ton. Um, yeah, but I, when I was in high school, I was a little stick and probably could have been pushed over a lot easier. Um, and then you get into college and you start doing the, the college lifting and you're like, what happened? Like, I can't fit into any jeans. Like, I have to throw like, all my shorts. Like, 
yeah, I went up several sizes in my pants um, just because of, of lifting. So, uh, and I, it won't go away. I, it won't go down. It just keeps going up. <laughs> Our friend, uh, though, guess... <laughs> our, our friend, soccer girl probs, they're constantly yeah. posting about how how the thick thighs uh, either save lives <laughs> or ruin their lives. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bad as a soccer player. It's just like I think all of us, we have thick thighs. It's, everybody's like, we need new jeans. Like, it's just it's just a struggle. It is what it is. <laughs> We need to we it's need to like, come up with soccer girl drip as opposed to soccer girl probs, bro. We need to sell yes. jeans, <laughs> thick thigh jeans, yeah. bro. That's all. That's also been a, a big, uh, you know, especially the, the last couple, like maybe two three years. The 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 fashion, the fits of how to uh, arrive to games. We've been oh. seeing it a lot from uh, from Gotham FC. We see uh, Angel City, San Diego, Orlando. They they they. It's a big part of the marketing yeah. uh, campaign, and and how to just you not even just the, the the campaigns for the teams, but how to just build your own brand. Is that something that you're thinking of of, of arriving fashionably uh, to to matches? Um. So while I think that is so cool, I also just like wearing Nike shorts and t-shirts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I'm terrible with shopping. I'm terrible with finding clothes that like are cute and like you know i just i like being comfortable so that's just me um right. but yeah this is but this is the origin story of how sarah fuller starts her clothing line you oh know i mean God. you're ready the pit you're ready you're like i oh, know i just couldn't really find anything and then boom now you're on the cover of vogue <laughs> right <laughs> sarah fuller's in a conference room like you know how there's no pockets in dresses what if the dress was we're, made out of all pockets <laughs> the whole thing is pockets also sweatpants all right, I'm yes. out. <laughs> Y'all work <Yes>. on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, last question. This is from Drew, uh, Drew Toro. He asked a question. He's from Minnesota. He said, have you tried a Juicy Lucy yet? Do you okay. know what that is? If you don't know what it is, it's, a, it's what Minnesota is known for, or Minneapolis. It is a okay. cheeseburger where the cheese is inside the beef patty. So when you bite into it, it oozes out. I don't know where I got the nickname from, but Juicy Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they're proudest of up in Minnesota. Look, it's cold okay. for a long time up there. You got to forgive them. <laughs> they come up with crazy stuff. Uh, no, I have not tried that, and I will try it. I will find a place like now to go try okay. that because that sounds really good. Well, can you do us a favor? Could you tag us in your in your reel or TikTok review of this Juicy Lucy so we can share it with our fans? Yes, yes, I can do that. Please. Okay, if we, you, we did have one at Blue uh, when Door. we went to Minnesota at, at the Blue, Blue Door, Door, which Pub. I think is 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 it still open? I, for some reason, I thought it was closed. I feel like somebody told me that. I believe but it's where I, it was invented, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but but yeah, please what let us it know. Blue Door. Blue. Blue Door. Okay, I will look into that. I will. Okay. Okay. It's my Very full nice. and honest review of a Juicy Lucy. <laughs> uh, listen, oh, wow. Minnesotans are sitting at the edge of their seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this one is a a, a funny one. Uh, this is also from MJ Lee, but I I think because. Uh, oh, I know what you're about to ask, and I wasn't going to ask you this because I don't want you to think I thought of it. <laughs> no, 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 I think I think it's it's, it's pretty funny. So the, the question, so I when we told our fans like we, we're going to ask, uh, you know, what questions would you like to ask? I I usually always post a photo, and the photo uh, I used was the one of you holding the ball with uh, an in intimidating face. You have the the, the gloves on. You're looking yeah. pr pretty mean. Uh, and her question was. Uh, does she have to practice looking mean or does it come naturally? No, it comes very naturally. <laughs> that is my face. I like, even in high school, people would come up to me and be like, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing. Like, I'm having, I'm doing great. Like, I'm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad For we sorted it out. Yeah. smile through this entire interview. I don't want to be there when you make that switch. I like to be loud and run into people, says a 12-year-old Sarah Fuller. You know, <laughs> being mean comes naturally. Please, I want to be there only uh, when you're happy. 
<laughs> uh, absolutely incredible. Sarah Fuller, thank you so much uh, for joining us. This has been uh, super cool. I know, yeah, this is uh, obviously your, the, the season is starting and you'll be playing soon. And obviously there's a lot of training. Thank you for waking up uh, early after, after a tough uh, uh, practice. But yes. we want to wish you the best of luck uh, in, uh, you know, in this Minnesota uh, uh, Aurora inaugural season. It's going to be really, really exciting. Is, thank um, you. Uh, just you want to let people know, um, uh, you know, the game, I don't know if the game is sold out yet, but uh, anything you want to let people know about personally or with the team as well, just to uh, give them a, a little plug? Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's quite sold out yet, um, but our first game is May 26th at, at uh, TCO Stadium. That's where the Vikings train. Um, so we're, we're super excited about it. And then if you can come out, then come out to a game, come say hi, give me a high five. I'll be nice. I, <laughs> I won't yell at you. <laughs> so, uh, um, and please put yeah. some potato in her hand. Have some respect <laughs> when you see her. Some payback. I want, I, it, what would be great if, if some people in the, in, in the stands bring potatoes. Bring potatoes no, to know. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know you saw her on the Cooligans and you are a fan of Sarah Fuller. For every and clean <laughs> sheet at Minnesota Aurora, I want potatoes being thrown on the field. I want Kennebex. I want Golden Idaho. I want them all. <laughs> okay, we, fine. We need to start a little a little tradition. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're just gonna see Ashlyn in the stands holding a potato. Yeah. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Where can uh, people follow Sarah, you? Social media, Instagram, Twitter. I repost anything uh, women's sports. So if you're into that or you want to repost it too, go and do that. Um, I sometimes make funny TikToks. You can follow me there. All right. What What's Very your cool. handle? So, what's your handle? Um. Oh, I don't know. You can look up Sarah Fuller. <laughs> Sarah Fuller. I, got, okay. I got the check mark. So you're good. <laughs> let's go. Look, you she got it before we did. I, uh, I'm all <laughs> <laughs> Uh Sarah, uh, this has been an absolute honor. Thank you so much. And again, best of luck uh, this season in goal. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>